Hi, I'm Mark Taylor, and it's time for the Mark Taylor Show. Uh, this week's guest is Greta Frigo. She's going to be on here talking about life with Alzheimer's. Welcome to the show, Greta. How do you do? Thanks for coming on. Um, so, Greta, where, where are you from? I guess we'll start right off right from the start here. Where, where are you from? I'm from St. Stephen. And you, and you lived there all your life? Pretty much. Uh, out in the country before that. Lived out in Linfield, but we moved in St. Stephen when I was about uh, in high school. Okay. And, uh, yeah. Hometown. As I as I noted at the, in, in the introduction, uh, we're going to talk about life with Alzheimer's, and it's something that's quite uh, close to home for you. You 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 have both parents that are in various stages of of Alzheimer's, correct? Yes, yes, I do. So your is which your your mom and dad obviously, and which which one is is further along? It's mom is quite a bit further along. She's ninety. Okay. And uh, her stage of Alzheimer's now is she's getting quite, you know, fairly close to the end stage, I would say, Okay. Uh, which is quite scary. Uh, she's lost a lot of her vocabulary, um, struggles to find her words, but she's still very quick, very witty, okay. and um, surprises me a lot of times of how aware she is of right. what's going on. So how long has, has it been? Like, I, I, re I realize it's probably not easy to put a, a time frame on it because it you know, we just don't know, but how long, I guess, would have been that she got diagnosed? Well, mom was diagnosed probably, I'd say, seven years ago. Okay. Um, with mom, there really wasn't anything they could do as far as medications go. She's very small, and uh, she couldn't tolerate the meds. So, basically, we're just... She's left her on her uh, own. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's not too much we can do except keep her safe. Right, and your, your dad's in a similar situation, but quite, not quite far. How, how long has it been that he's been diagnosed? He's probably, I'm thinking, two years Okay. since the diagnosis. And the diagnosis was important only because it helps you get the, the assistance that you need from the government. Right. Um, and he is responding very, very well to the medications. Okay. Uh, before he went on meds, he was um, getting quite aggressive. Okay. And, uh, yeah, we were quite worried that he wouldn't be able to stay home. So what, what sort of medications would they give? They give you medications to slow it down. What are the, like, is it pill form? Or what, what are the medications that you would take for something like that? Well, there's, there's one that's, I think it's the very first one that they try with everybody, and okay. it's called Aricet. And um, they start you at a low dose, and it can cause stomach problems and that sort of thing, so you have to be careful. And you keep an eye on that, and uh, he's had an increase in his dosage and he's doing well um, just the one increase so far and we'll see if it goes any further than that but he's doing he's doing quite well okay so you said you mentioned that he w had become aggressive did this help combat that aggressiveness to, to try to calm him down and yeah he seems to have uh, he, he was just moody okay. like you would never know when you walked up to him if you said something one day he would laugh at it and the next day he'd you know, just really be very upset. And this was this uncharacteristic of him normally. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. He wasn't yeah. like he that. Was, he's pretty laid back most of the time, so um, it was a little scary at times. So, where, when did you? I guess you you found out about it. Did you go? Like, obviously, doctor's appointments, but there's something that must have been leading up to it that that you think uh, something's not right here, or, or or did they? You know, did you realize it, or your siblings, or did they realize it? The the patients will call them. Your yeah. mom and dad on the, on their own. How did it yeah. work? Well, I think with like with mom, we've always known. We've always taken care of mom since we were kids. It's it's always seemed to be, and we knew that there was Alzheimer's in her family, and um, so it wasn't any surprise with her. Uh, with dad, I noticed. Um, lapses in judgment, like he would go downstairs and he started the snowblower in the basement one year. Right. And that was not a smart thing to do. No, no. Uh, right beside the furnace. Exactly. Um, he would go downstairs if there was a leak, instead of turning off one uh, control, he would go and turn everything. And he'd actually go into the electrical panel and shut breakers off and okay it just he he just wasn't reasoning well no no okay so that was uh with dad that was the first thing um then i noticed bills weren't being paid or some bills were being overpaid and it was just 
it, it was quite a mess. When had I you been realized. living with them all that time, or is it? I, I had. Okay. I had, okay. Um, I've been with them since 2001. Okay. Uh, but I was working. Okay. Up until four years ago. Okay. So that can be like it, he can fool you. Right. You you would not know the man had Alzheimer's if you sat down and talked to him for a short period of time. Right. Maybe if you spent a little bit more time with him, you might understand that there's something not quite right. Well, I think I think where you're, um, you know, you're a, a child of his, and you would probably know stuff that he would know, right? Whereas I wouldn't, right? I, I wouldn't know that he would know stuff about history or or sports or whatever the case may be. You'd know whether he knew it or not, and so I, that would be a, a, a thing probably you'd pick up on. Yeah. Um, so there's no cures for the for the disease, but is, have you ever heard of any causes or anything like that? What would have caused? You obviously you mentioned hereditary. It's well, I've read up a little bit about it, and I I know the latest findings are that it's something to do with the proteins in your brain, and um, and I may have that wrong, but they are getting close to finding it. A cause. Yeah, if, I think so. if they find the cause, and they may be able to treat it somehow or find a, a cure for it, which is something I'm, you know, we all hope that it happens. That's for sure. W were you prepared for the news? I guess that was a, like when you knew you you had an inkling that something because you, you said your mom was going on for a long time, right? Yeah, um, I was prepared for the news with mom. It wasn't quite a shock as as it was with dad when, and ev even dad. Um, when I first got the diagnosis, I misunderstood and thought it was just, um, and I don't want to say just dementia, but his was dementia. Right. And then the next time we went to the specialist, I said, so, you know, just to clarify, he, right. he has dementia, mom has Alzheimer's. And she said, no, no, he, he has Alzheimer's as well. And I just kind of, it was kind of, um, it was a, a shock, yeah. scary. Do, do you know the difference between the two, or is it a one is not as severe? Is that the the, the thing, or? Well, I think um, I think with dementia, it, there's a lot, a lot more conf there's confusion, which goes with Alzheimer's. And dementia, by the way, is a blanket term for right. Alzheimer's. Okay. Um, but with Alzheimer's, your brain cells are actually being destroyed. Okay. And that's the difference with with dementia. They're not being destroyed. You're just you lose things, but. It, it's still in there okay. if they can access it. Are, are the tests that they do, is it, is it clinical or well, how do they, can they, do they just interview the, the patient and yeah. they, they can make a diagnosis that way? Yeah. There's basically. tests and stuff that they can do? Yeah, they do, uh, you know, t cognitive reasoning tests and things like that and you fill out some papers and you answer a bunch of questions and it's a very simple test. Um, right. They ask you to remember three words and ask you the same words like three minutes later. Can you remember them? Can you not? Um, and based on that, plus a whole bunch of other, other little tests, they make their diagnosis. I, I think sometimes I think people get confused too because I mean there's there's you know as you age your memory gets worse right everybody does right yeah. so you don't know I, I would think that the normal person or the normal Joe whatever word, word you want to use wouldn't you know if I got the uh, you know maybe just starting out with Alzheimer's or or if I got uh, am I just forgetful because I'm getting older I, like how do you know I guess that's that's the question and I, I think it comes down to the the cognitive reasoning where you would you wouldn't choose to go downstairs and start your snowblower in, right. in the basement. Yeah. Uh, whereas, you know, something Forgetting like that. Forgetting your keys or something. Go, go get yeah. in the car and you go, oh, geez, I forgot my keys. Yeah. I gotta go back inside, but. Yeah. I, I read somewhere that uh, if you forget your keys, yeah, that's a memory problem. But if you forget what your keys are for, <laughs> that's, that's, then, that's then a difference, be, yeah. different thing altogether. Yeah. So how, now that you've found, found out this, is there, is there government support or is there programs that are available for stuff like this? Yes. Obviously there's the Alzheimer's Society, right? Or yep. stuff like that. How far reaching is that? Is, do they have people that can come to your house and meet with you and help yes. you or? Yes, it's, uh, I've actually found the process very easy except for the paperwork. Okay. You know, government paperwork is always insane. Right. But, um, no, once once we got things rolling, then it wasn't any time at all. 
Okay. That we started. Because they having. want proof that you've got it. Obviously, which I can't imagine somebody would fake it. I don't like. But that's you know you are right. That's who we're yeah. dealing with here. So it's. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So you. Uh, yeah. Once you get that paperwork in, um, and I found that everybody has been very supportive. Everybody I've I've dealt with, uh, you know, on the government side of it, and um, yeah, it's it's one of the best things I've ever done is so, get a help. So you have uh, you have siblings, right? Yeah, those are six or seven of you in the family. There's seven of us. Seven of us. So where are you in that? Are you the oldest, youngest, or in the middle? Or no, I'm the third oldest. Okay, so you have you have siblings that are older than you that are two or older. Yeah, and, and, and I'm sure that's crossed their mind, right? I mean, as it's crossed oh. yours. Oh yeah, we're all like, and I wish there was a, a test that we could take and say, okay, you are, you know, you should be on medication now. Because they say the earlier that you can get um, the medication into you, the, the better your prognosis is. Again, you're not going to get a cure. Right. But it will slow things down. So you, you you don't, I mean, it's hard for you to foresee if, if you're, but you can, you're going down that road or not. But yeah. Your parents probably didn't see it. Did your mom actually know that she was getting, she was slipping into Alzheimer's? It was, yeah, there was, there was a point. I think she's past that point now, but there was a point where she, Every sentence that came out of her mouth and, and every mistake that she made and every time she did something that wasn't quite right, she would say, what? What is going on with me? Yeah. There's something wrong here. What's wrong with me? And uh, she doesn't ask that anymore. No. She's and you, and you say that's that. where your dad is pretty well, right? He's at that stage. Dad sleeps a lot. <laughs> yeah. And that's, he's at, a, at the stage where he knows he's got it. Yeah. Yeah. He does. And I'm sure it, it, it scares the heck out of him. Oh, it's got to. Yeah, because he's seen your mother, right, obviously, and he knows yeah. what she's going through, even, yeah. you know. Well, he, he has asked me, um, is, that, is that what is going to happen to me? And I've, you know, tried to reassure him, but, but I don't know what, no, no, what's going to no. happen. But I've told him that I don't see the progression in him that I've seen in Mom. Right. So hopefully uh, the medication that he's on and, and uh, everything that we're doing to try and help him. Slow it. But basically, I guess what, one of the questions I had, and I think you've, you've answered it in a way, it was how problematic should your memory loss be before you go seek help? But you're saying that if you're starting to do things that could ha possibly harm thing, harm you or, yeah. you know, and yeah. that are out of character and, and don't thing, make sense. But the thing is, when that happens, you don't know yourself that you're doing something. No. That's not quite right. So a lot of times it's the family members that once they um, they don't know until they've actually spent some time with, with, the, uh, with the people that are affected. And then they're like, holy cow. I know I was. I was shocked when I first started staying home. Yeah. It must have been a, a real eye-opener, I yeah. guess. Yeah. So what advice would you have for people that think they may have it, I guess? that's Because you've gone kind of, you've seen both your parents, and it's, you know, seek some help, I guess. If you yeah. I don't really have any advice. I'm, because I you haven't gone through it yourself. Yeah. That's right. I yeah, understand that. I'm, I'm trying to avoid the, the reality of uh, the possibility that it may be coming up the road for me. Um, there is no definitive test no. that can tell you that it's going to happen or not going to happen. So. But yeah, I think what you're saying, you can actually, if you, if you think there's something up, or you think yeah. uh, you have a loved one that looks like they're slipping a bit, and you wonder, okay, maybe, it's, 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 see, go, go to your, your family oh. doctor and, and get some tests done and, and find what's going on. Yeah, because without that, you can't get the help that you need right. um, as easily. No, no, I think. no. Yeah. Uh, so now we got, we, we'll move ahead a little bit, because now you and I have got something in common here. We both write for the St. Croix Courier. And you started, uh, what, three months ago or so? You yeah. started writing a column. Uh, Where did the inspiration come from that, for that? Yeah. Uh, that was something, you, and you're writing about your life with Alzheimer's, right? I mean, that's yeah. what you kind of what, how did you come up with the idea? Did somebody urge you, or did you do it on your own? Um, well, we, um, we as a family wanted to keep everybody appraised as to what was happening with mom and dad, and you know, basically the daily lives and what's you know, the nitty gritty. And uh, so we got on Facebook and I started writing uh, stories on there and called it Happenings at Home. And it just kind of progressed from there. Shelly um, McKeeman. 
yeah. who works at the Courier. Well, another one of my guests. Exactly. Oh. She was on the show, yes. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, she's a friend of mine on Facebook. She read my stuff, and she suggested that it might be something that uh, the Courier would be interested in. So we had a little meeting, and... Bingo. Bingo. You're, you're in business. Voila. <laughs> yeah. So, so you're, you have... you. Your inspiration for it is that basically is the day-to-day goings-on, right? Yeah. I mean, you know, you write it on a weekly thing, but obviously, and I, I understand that um, it's it's not a happy disease, but there's some fun, funny things I should yeah. say that happen from time to time, and Every you, may, you may as well laugh as cry, I Every guess. Every day, yeah, you know. Um Mom constantly surprises me. One of the home care workers said to her the other day, um, I'm crazy, Emily, and I got it from you. And Mom just looked at her and said, well, I, I wondered where I'd put that. <laughs> <laughs> just bam, she's right there. Yeah, yeah. So there's always something to laugh about. Well, I, yeah, because I think there's uh, the, the personalities change, as we, another thing we noted, and it's she's changing. Uh, how many of your, of your family live around here? That uh, I... Myself and my brother, one of my brothers live in St. Stephen. I have a sister on Deer Island, and everybody else lives away. Okay, yeah. so that would be a way if they had a, you know, the paper or something they could read up and see what's going on, yeah. as opposed to calling you up and getting it rid of the word of the mouth. I mean, you could have it in a, a written form, which is, which is kind of neat. I mean, or you could email it to them, I guess, or yeah, something like that. It's a big help. It's a big help because uh, Dad had congestive heart failure a couple years ago, and uh, it was much easier for me to get on the computer and, and just type out what was going on rather than make six different phone calls. Yep, exactly. And, uh, so, so when you're doing these uh, write-ups and stuff like that, you're writing about, I mean, there's things that they hide, your, your mother hides things, there's, there's all kinds of things that go on yeah. that people, you know, it's almost like they're gone back in, to their, their childhood in, in uh, some, some respects, right? Oh, yeah, yeah. I, I have a 90-year-old toddler. Like, right, yeah. <laughs> she's just, and she's very, very fast. Um, keys, like, we have to tell the home care workers to make sure not to leave your keys laying around or your cell phones. Uh, because she just, she's not doing it on purpose, but she sees something and she picks it up and puts it away. Okay. To her, so it won't get lost. Right. And, uh, you know, meanwhile, you're going crazy trying to find... Yeah, exactly. And you don't know where uh, anything is. Yeah, yeah. So ha- have you been getting any feedback on the show? Or the show? On, on the show. On, on, <laughs> on, the, on, the, on your uh, columns and things like that? Yeah. People that say, you know, I've got similar stories or this sounds like something that's happened to me. Yeah, yeah, I get that. Uh, whenever I'm out now in the supermarket or uh, I've uh, received some mail from people as far away as uh, there was one lady in the Netherlands that uh, they still get the, the courier over there and, okay. and uh, she just sent me an email and you know said how much she appreciated hearing about it and, and um, another lady in Ottawa and then just people around St. Stephen. Okay. Um, I had a, a friend that we haven't seen in 20 years get a hold of us from out west because he reads the courier and okay. came across my column. So yeah, it's been it's been a lot of fun. Yeah. A lot of support from people. Yeah. Yeah. It's not a it's not a something that I think you and I talked about on the phone yesterday. It's not it's getting to the point where it's touching just it's almost like cancer in some respects. Yeah. Uh, and I and I read somewhere the other day and I don't know, I think this may be an old stats, but in the United States, it's the sixth leading cause of death. In in, 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 and I think another thing I mentioned to you, Alzheimer's or Alzheimer's. I'm not sure of the right pronunciation of it. No. Uh, but it was uh, it was actually a, a doctor in a German doctor in 1906 made the discovery of you know memory loss and stuff like that. And he, of course, because of all the work and studies they did, they named it after him. But so what, what do you find is the biggest part of it? Is it the short-term memory loss, long-term memory loss? Like, obviously you're saying they can't remember where they put things, yeah. but do, do they remember things that happened in their childhood or, yeah. like that's a, so you do remember a long time ago. Yeah, well with mom especially, she's constantly, um, I mean she's lived in the same home for, it's gotta be at least 35 years now, and she looks around this home and she doesn't recognize it. She is looking for the things that were in her home when she was a child. Oh wow. <coughs> and um, pr- 
pretty much every day she'll go into a period of time where she wants to go home. Right. And, and you tell her that she's home? And she just... She has two, you know, two set reactions to that. One is she very seldom gets angry about it, but she is confused. Right. Or she'll accept that she's home, and then two seconds later she'll say, well, when, who's picking me up? Who's taking me home? Okay. You are home, Mom. Oh, yes, you just told me that. Yeah, okay. But what time is somebody coming to pick me up? <laughs> you know, yeah. Just, bam. So just how, how do you react? Do you, do you kind of... You know, give her honest answers, or do you agree with her? What What do you go like if she she yeah. says stuff to you, or is it, it a mixed reaction to what you? If uh, she she asks you things that you like, you'll say, "Well, I don't." For instance, come, when somebody come to get me, now is there times you just go, "Oh, mom, don't talk that way." I don't, you know, or, or do you say, "Oh, yeah, there's somebody coming." Would she notice the difference? I mean, I, well, you kind of play it by ear. Uh, right. The. Probably one of the heartbreaking things right now is all along she's been able to ask me um, about her parents who have passed, you know, it's been 50, 60 years. Right. And um, all along, every time she's asked me, I've said, no, no, mom, they've, they've passed away a long, long time ago. Oh, that's right, that's right. And then recently she asked me that, and when I said they've passed away, she, she was devastated. Okay. Because... Just her. like she just heard the news now. Exactly, and it really, you know, it. I felt very bad. It comes to your heartstrings, yeah. obviously, because I mean, yeah. it's, you you know what it would be like, you know. Yeah. You can just imagine, you know, they were your grandparents, and your grandparents died, and now hearing it again, 50, 60 years later, is just like it. Yeah. It's brand new to you. Yeah, it was it was pretty heart wrenching, and uh, so you know, my automatic response is not to lie. Okay. But I think I'm going to have to from now on because I don't want to cause her that pain every time. No, no. You no, know, even so. if it's just short-lived because yeah. you may forget that you told her and things like that. Yeah. Um, has there been, and another thing I've heard about, and then you, I think you and I discussed a little bit, personality changes that happen. Like if somebody that could be happy-go-lucky is now abrasive or, or, or maybe people that yeah. were, you know, quite... Uh, I don't want to say clean living people that could possibly take up swearing or, or whatever, drinking. I mean, what, there's all kinds of things that happen. Is it there, have you noticed anything like that going on? Uh, Mom's quite loose with the. My sister says her filter is gone. Okay. Um, yeah, she can she can swear with the best of them now. Like a, like a pirate or uh, like, a, like pirate. a sailor or something. And there are times when she gets so angry that her whole body is vibrating. She's just and that's but, not like her uh, no so, i mean and no. you said that maybe she would let one slip once in a while but now which what you can kind of tone down there's people around yeah but now she yeah. doesn't care no. and she just says it you know yeah says what's on her mind there's no just yeah if it's there it's there yeah but she's she's very um we've been very lucky she hasn't gone to uh, a place of anger i know a lot of alzheimer's patients go that way um and she may in the future i don't know but uh, so far and i don't know if that's part of um her being able to be at home and me letting her have as much freedom as she can independence you know maybe she's not frustrated as much as she would be um if she was in a clinical setting right where you know you don't have as much freedom so uh, and it's some excuse me sometimes people wander too which is another thing that happens yeah I'm, you know if you run into run into that at all encountered I'm, that if, yeah, you know they just take off if you're not watching yeah, I'm very concerned, especially with mom. Um, I really didn't think she could physically go too far from the house. And she proved me wrong last summer. She got very upset about something and uh, ended up, one of the neighbors brought her home. She was on her way up the road. Uh, wow. Had gone probably four or five houses away from home. And I really didn't think she could physically do that. Wow. Because she's just a little woman and she's... Um, She's got back problems and but yeah her will was there and she was so upset. I, I i guess t to wrap it up because i i told you this was going to go by fast and it's almost yeah. gone uh, and i asked you a question earlier that this is a similar one but it's a little bit different is advice to people that have friends or relatives with alzheimer's what would you give to them to advice to tell them 
if you could just tell anybody what, what to do, what would you yeah. recommend? Well, I think the biggest misconception is I think people are, are really more afraid of Alzheimer's patients than they actually need to be. Right. Um, in our instance, in our case, I've found a lot of joy in it. Uh, I found a lot of laughter. We, uh, we laugh every day. Um, Dad sings just out of the blue. and um, I wish more people would come to visit them. Right, okay. Because people do say, well, I don't want to see them that way. I want to remember them, but yep. this is the reality. Right. Yeah. Well, I want to thank you for taking the time to come on, Greta. It's been great listening to you and your, the fascinating stories you have. And uh, Greta's got a, a column in the, in the St. Croix Courier, the Tuesday edition. And uh, pick up the, the copy of it and, and read her column. Anyway, that's uh, another episode of The Mark Taylor Show. Thank you for joining me. And please join in next time. Thank you. Thank you.